Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, oops, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How's it going? Hope you're all well. Uh, I moved the face cam um, over here because it's just, I have to have the, the surface here so bright so you can see the jacket um, that I thought I'd just cover up some of that brightness there. So, hope that's okay. Hi Julia, how's it going? All right, so we're gonna do good today, right? <laughs> Hi, Betsy, hola, como esta? Hi, Emily, how's it going? Uh, so uh, I had a rough sewing day on Thursday. I think we could all agree it was a kind of, it was fine, but it was slower than usual. Hi, Melin, hi, Sue, how's it going? <clears throat> and you know, like it, we're, we're making re really good progress, but you know, because of some of the unique things we're doing, <clears throat> I d only got pretty much through the pockets and the fronts here. And then when I went to the back, I accidentally sewed the center back upside down. I knew when I was doing it, didn't I say, huh? So, um, I just recut those pieces and re -sewed them. Like it took me five minutes. It was really fast. So no skin off my nose, whatever that expression is. So, hi Delta, hi Barbara. <laughs> yeah, hi Eliza, hi Paul, welcome back. Yeah, so I'm sorry to those looking for the um, a tutorial that I'm not like making fast headway. So, <laughs> that's so Terry. You got worried, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> You know, I'm so turned around. I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I am so tired right now. I, my husband and I have only slept in our own bed since before we went on our trip because like I said before, we're taking turns sleeping where my daughter was living in, in this like separate room from the house because of this cat she adopted and we want him to stick around. He's such a sweetie and we're going to, we're trying to incorporate him into our house. So we're taking shifts and you know, it's like, it's comfortable out there, but it's different, right? And it's, everything's different. And this little guy loves to, he just loves that you're there. And so he's like up all night and stuff. So um, between that and just like, we haven't really had a day off, you know, because we both went right back to work like the next day when we got back, you know? So um, I like, I'm feeling it. So <laughs> I'm feeling it. I even just sat here for just for like a few minutes, my eyes shut. I was like, all right, because I want my head screwed on straight today. So, and this is, this, these are all very simple, very straightforward steps. The zipper placket, super simple and straightforward. Um, you don't even have to set the collar on. It gets sewn in a facing, which is so easy. 
So really my challenges that I've added to this are using this unique thread that kind of hopefully will add to the waterproofness of the seams. And I've done a lot of experimenting with that. And I feel like, I also feel like, look, it looks good in person, but on camera, I feel like it looks a little rumpled, you know? I think that's fine. Like I'm not criticizing it, but at the same time, and it's also much darker in person. See, it's a little bit more like a, it's a navy blue. Um, so I feel like there is that as well. Like I really want to iron it, you know, and let it relax. I think I got the tension a little better today. So nice. Beverly having a party. Oh, nice. Hi, Elena. Hi, Eliza. <laughs> oh, that's right. You follow my personal account. That's so funny. You're beginning to hate party. They are so needy. Well, and I feel like they are kind of the, um, sometimes the kind of most upfront and center focal point of your project. Like you see those first. So yeah. And I have this, I feel like, didn't, don't I have one snap here that felt funny to me? It's not this one. Is it this one? Yeah, this one doesn't want to, I don't want to get it stuck on there. So I, oh yeah, this one's a little bit loose. So I'm gonna, I have to, oh look, look, it's spinning. Yeah, so I need to work on this one. And um, that's the other thing is that, yeah, I, I feel like like it could just be smoother. That's all, so anyway. <laughs> right, Delta, I know. I know, I mean, he, he um, you know, the fact that he's actually survived out there all by himself, and so he is, you know, so at risk for being gobbled up by something. Um, there's so many critters out there. So I don't really want him to wander off, you know? And I know that he was seen in other areas of the neighborhood, like basically like a mile away. So I don't want him to, you know, wander off. You know, it's so dangerous between the highway. It's not a highway, but it's like a it's like the only road to paradise on this side. So, you know, it's kind of busy. And the critters, you know, and just even neighborhood dogs, you know. So, but I've seen him climb a tree like that. So, all right. So these are the fronts. I'm going to set those aside. I think I did this out of order where I was supposed to do the, um, like, top half. And then I sew the whole waist seam together. And that's because there is a waist casing that I am not doing. But I did show in the last stream how to sew that waist casing if you're doing it. So... I'm gonna just pick up where we left off. I fixed my back, like I said, I had flipped it over. And so I'm gonna attach the yoke here to the top. I can kind of feel the difference of the fabric. That's what I'm looking for right now. And it has three eighths inch seams, so I'm just gonna sew it together. And hopefully we can just kind of move at a good pace today. I do feel like we'll be doing this project. Let me get situated. I kind of borrowed this chair from the out there it's so much more comfortable but it's my rug is still so squishy it's kind of it's kind of hard to move over so yeah maybe we can get kind of deep into this today i so i think yeah on wednesday instead of cutting the north star pullover i'm going to finish this up and then hopefully the north star pullover we can just do in two streams maybe like one short one and like you know um you know, a little epic sewing one on Saturday, so. <laughs> All right, Terry. Yeah, I think I was always surprised by how many people lived in Paradise because it doesn't look like it is was as big as it was before the fire. And I think partly it's the name. It really attracts people for the name. But yeah, that's where my office is. So my address here is, in, is Paradise. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's all kinds of er, like urban legends on why it was named that. And uh, one of them is kind of funny. And it's there, all the urban legends are actually wrong. Someone just named it Paradise. Uh, I think it did have another name at one point, but it wasn't anything interesting. And one of the funnier urban legends is that it was actually um, named Pair of Dice, like as in gambling. <laughs> and it was, then they'd wanted to kind of class it up a bit, <laughs> it, but it's not true. <laughs> All right, so I'm just top stitching, top stitching this. Oh, you know what? I did bring my, 
That's so funny. I've, I've spent so much time preparing today and I still didn't notice I don't have my little handheld iron. Because I got inspired by one of you in my comments about using, is that you, Barbara? Um, like a wallpaper roller. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get, I actually have, you know, these are, I use these irons for weights. You see them on my pattern table, the ones with the handles. Um, someone gave me this little guy and it's a little awkward to use because it doesn't have a, a handle on it, but it's still nice and smooth, really heavy. And I love it because it's small. And what I re recently realized is I just, if I use them upside down, they're easy to grab. But from this side, because the sides right here, right here, are just so gently sloped. You know, it's one of those things where you go like this and you can't grab it sometimes, you know? So, um, as a weight, I just turn it upside down, but I love that I can kind of get into somewhere really close with these narrow points as a weight. But I'm gonna use it more today like, you know, like it was an iron, so I could just press things like this and it does make a difference, you know? And I had brought this home for some small quilting jobs I was doing, jobs, like little projects. <laughs> I don't have a job quilting. So I brought, thought I'd grab that today. Yeah, right, Betsy, it's so true. And this was a, a really big uh, mining community, uh, especially a little bit further towards the mountains. In fact, my neighbor who lives across the street from me, he lives in a really, he doesn't live there. But I mean, he obviously lives across the street from me and he bought our neighbor's house that, um, is its own whole cool story. But <clears throat> where he lives part-time is in a town called Polga, P-U-L-G-A. And he has a gold mine out there. And he's, because there, there's still people mining here. Um, and there's a bunch of him and his friends who have like, like little places and maybe they kind of like rough live. Like he has a cabin there and it sounds pretty nice. Um, but I think a lot of these folks just like have probably little structures or campsites or something and they all work on the, his land. I don't really know. I don't know him well enough to know all the details. It's interesting. Um, and the reason I know even that much, oh, this is the, um, I need to sew this together because of the, I need to get rid of this casing seam. Remember? So let's double check our sides. So the reason I learned all this is so Polga and Konkau are two places that are constantly being under evacuation warning during fire season. It's out there. And he was overlooking the campfire in paradise and it didn't get to his property. It singed the edges and that's about it. And a lot of folks held their ground. Like they stayed on their property and tried to put out fires and things, you know? And I, I don't, I'm not sure how many people were lost in the fire who did that. A lot of people did save whole neighborhoods for doing that. It's, it's pretty incredible and really dangerous. But the reason I learned that he has a mine out there is really neat because we were seeing these huge trees, like bigger than this, like huge trees, like timber on his property. Like, like we used to live in a timber town, so we know what a timber truck looks like. And that's basically what he had. He had like two timber trucks full of timber on his property and he was milling his own lumber. And I was so impressed. I was like, Heck, he's milling his own lumber, like actual lumber. And he was had it all stacked. And so I talked to him about it. And he said, yeah, they're pretty much giving away the trees for free that are that they have to, to, to cut down here because of the Paradise Fire. But some of them are still good wood. And um, he knows how to mill his own lumber. And he takes it up to his mine and uses it for, like, he's, like, using it to line the sides of his mine. So I was like, okay, you're, you're handy, you know? All right, so I'm just comparing right now. I'm gonna make sure that this little notch right here is actually the seam I need to sew at because we're not making any mistakes today. That's why. Yeah, so that's the seam right there. Perfect, okay, so that's what we need to do. So uh, if you're making the casing, you are going to not sew it like I just did. You're gonna sew it at this notch right here, like I'm about to do as well. 
Try and keep a nice straight line. It's, a, it's an inch and an eighth away from this raw edge. I think I'm gonna give myself a couple of guides so that I stay nice and straight. If you're doing the casing, you particularly want to stay straight, you know? So that you have a nice even casing when you go to stitch it. So I'm just gonna give myself a couple of guides here. And then we'll just trim this off. I have the notch at the end here. I'm going to trim this off. Top stitch it. So I think in the instructions you probably assemble the whole top to this seam right here and then the whole bottom, front and back, and then you do the whole casing as one all the way around. So we're going to do side seams now. This is a pretty long jacket. Look how huge that armhole looks. <clears throat> Try and match my waist seam here really nicely. Let's see here. I'm going to match it on the seam line. A question for you guys. So I um, I have two things to say. Um, I am uh, coming up with August's calendar right now. I wanted to remind anybody that is considering doing the blazer sew along that the last week in August is when I'm going to kind of kick it off. But what I'm going to do that whole week is just focus on cutting it out fitting it, um, things like that. And then after that week, I think I wanted to see what you guys think. Do you guys want like a once a week sew along? So like maybe every Saturday and then we do it for maybe six weeks. Is that what, you're, what you would like? Because I'm totally down for that. That sounds kind of cool. Um, and then we'll just do smaller projects each week before that. So we could do, you know, just one week where like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we just focus on like, I'm going to, you know, cut a prototype out, fit it. Um, and then by the end of the week, I have my jacket cut out for the, to kick off the sewing the following Saturday. And then it would go through like mid-October. So I was thinking that would give people some time because I know like school will be starting. So for some folks that makes things harder to have time to sew and other people it makes it easier, right? Just depends on where you're at. And then we would also all have our coats for all of us in the Northern Hemisphere before it starts getting too cool, you know, weather-wise. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, so you can work carefully in between sessions. Yeah, no stress. Um, and I was, I'm obviously doing the blazer by Cashmeret. I do the shoulders, right? I feel like I'm doing this jacket in the craziest order ever. I'm gonna sew the shoulders. I'm not doing those little um, epaulets, the straps on the shoulders. So my shoulders are pretty straightforward here. 
yeah, so I just wanted to remind all of you, and so that still gives you lots of time to get all of your materials. I Like I said, I bought my fabric from one place, and then I bought the Notions and Interfacing Kit directly from Cashmerette, because you can buy it without the fabric. Um, and then I was looking at her blog so along yesterday, just to kind of gauge, like, all right, um, how many weeks should I devote to this sew along? The blog is divided up into nine segments and a couple of the segments are very, very quick. So that's why I was thinking we could probably do it in six. We can always add right at that point. So I think that that's a, a nice, you know, uh, goal. So Anyway, I hope some of you join us. Maybe you don't sew a blazer. Maybe you sew another jacket or something and we just do it over six weeks. Six weeks is going to pass either way. At least at the end of it, you'd have something that you really want. Maybe tackle a bigger project that you've been kind of putting off or you kind of want to gear up to. Um, and, you know, you're always welcome to ask questions about whatever project you're doing. And if you're in the Facebook group, my little Facebook group that is super <laughs> chill. Um, <clears throat> you can ask questions in there as well. All right, so I just top stitched my seams towards the back. So now we have, we have a jacket. We have a vest. Let's see, it's for my husband. Oh. This is, it's got a two inch hem. This feels really good. Oops, sorry, I just whacked you guys. All right. Yeah, the Auburn, Emily. That's the one I'm doing. But other folks are doing other blazers, so it doesn't matter which one you'd select. Most of the sewing steps are gonna be fairly similar if you're looking at one with that kind of classic blazer look. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Betsy. It is really nice. Um, the disadvantage, Betsy, is I don't have a free arm. So don't forget, you'd be giving that up. Okay, cool, Lena. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, good. Um, so that was one, my one question. And then my other one is... We're going to do the sleeve now, by the way. Just looking for my cuff here. <clears throat> My other question is, um, okay, I don't know if any of you know this, and if you're on a device, you can see this. At the bottom of the screen, there is now YouTube Shorts, which they've been there for a while, and maybe you've gotten into that rabbit hole before. You know, they're trying to compete with TikTok, and now Instagram's doing Reels, and you probably, I don't know, I don't think I'll, I don't know. I have complicated feelings about the whole Reels thing on Instagram. Um, I feel like a lot of them just give me nothing, but maybe I would do them if they were instructional. So, but I did want to try my hand at shorts because it is another fun way to just provide really short content. And so I did my first one yesterday. It's okay. <laughs> um, and I, but it was really just an experiment. Like I was watching how to videos and I wanted to do it. <laughs> and what I wanted from you guys was, what are really, really, really short tips that I could make? I have 60 seconds. So I wanted to get some ideas from you guys. And I have my little pad of paper here and my pen. So I'm ready. So are you, Julia? Oh, that's cool. Well, then you can help us. <laughs> yeah. You're going to make the Jessica... That's awesome, Malin. Okay, and I know Terry's already making one. Um, you're kind of gearing up for it, right, Terry? Or you're just gonna do it now, right? I'm sorry, it's so bright. So bright, so bright. All right, so we have our sleeve, and the sleeve has a placket right here. Just wanna look and make sure all my markings are on here. Basically, you just need your shoulder and your front notch on this piece. And on your underarm, you're going to need... Yeah, I swear in the picture, I swear in the picture, it's this piece that's pleated. Every time I look at this, 
Oh, no, it's not. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. Uh, you're going to need your pleat marks here, these two right here, which are a little bit kind of shallow. I think that this notch, weirdly, and then there's this one right here. Can you even see that? So you need, you have two pleats here. Um, this is just your seam allowance for the turn turn. Uh, that looks like there's a underarm notch here and that's it. That's what you need on that. So, all right, so let's see here. I think the first thing we do is actually have the instructions turned right here is do the pleats and we do the hem of this vent on the narrower underarm piece of the sleeve. So I'm gonna make sure I don't get my fabric confused and get a left and a right. So I'm gonna turn this three eighths and three eighths. You might wanna press it. I'm gonna use my little iron. Let's see how it does here. Yeah, you're right, Betsy, having a nice flat table. You can always maybe put one like an L next to you. I used to do that before I had a machine that went down into the table. My home machine, I actually have a table that it sits in. Um, I have to do this from the other, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this from the other side because I'm using a different thread on top than I am on as the bob, bottom. A little nervous to do this though. Okay. Yeah, so my home machine has a cabinet, and so it can sit down in the cabinet. Try not to get some torquing. I'm going to try and get that out. Oh, I did get it out. Great. Sometimes that works, you know, just smoothing it. <laughs> um, oh, that's cool, Terry. Hmm. Do I recommend it to up your sewing skills? I feel like... It would, for sure. And in all honesty, I haven't sewn very many blazers either. But I think that that's what kind of makes it fun, is that uh, we're going to all be coming at it together kind of blind. And you know me, I'm up for anything. <laughs> and we have plenty of time, right? So I think that there's no stress. I definitely do think it can up your skills, but... If you're not really interested in the blazer, I say pick something you're more interested in having because the thing is, I don't know where you're gonna use all those blazer skills if you're not gonna make blazers, you know? Like, yeah, if you sew a lot and you have more, sorry, I'm really, you know, struggling here. Um, you know, you're, experience is experience, right? Hi, Jules. Experience is experience. It all helps and it all, you know, aids every project. But I don't know. Do you have someone in your life who might want one? What if you made one for like wearing around the house, you know, like a cozy one for bedtime or something? I think thinking of it kind of in a, in a creative way that might be something that inspires you. That's what I try and do because sometimes we pick projects here and I'm like, hmm, I don't really need that, but what could I do to make it more applicable to my lifestyle, you know? I'm still waiting for all your little quick tips. <laughs> okay, so we have our vent here sewn and what's the next step? Oh, we're going to pin up this pleat. So do it from the wrong side and go up. So make your pleat go up match your notches, and we're just gonna tack it in the seam allowance. And same with here. So on the right side, it's gonna, the pleat's gonna be folding down. And on the wrong side, it folds up just like this. This is the wrong side. Oh, nice, Jules. Nello, Nancy, how's it going? Um, this one's up, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome to hear, Jules. I'm excited. So 
So Jules and Julia are both, that's funny, because sometimes I get you two confused because of your names. <laughs> and I love that you're both working on a blazer. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get rid of my long tail of thread here, because sometimes that likes to sneak into the seam. This one right here, it's my starting thread. All right, and then the next step is we're gonna do the underarm seam. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, seam down the center of the sleeve, off center. And we're gonna do that seam and we're gonna go just past this little vent that we just sewed. All right, so let me find my, so this one goes to you and you go to here, all right. About needles, thread types, how to counteract machines. Ooh. Oh, those are actually really, I like that. Gotta write that down. Oh, Jules, that sounds amazing. Um, yeah, right, Betsy? Exactly. Hand sewing on a button. Oh, I like that. That's true, Malin. A blazer could have some nice steps in common with nicer coat. I knew you guys would have some good ideas because I don't know sometimes what folks might want in 60 seconds or less. <laughs> Needles, thread types, eating fabric. <laughs> that sounds very personal, Emily. <laughs> Love it. Understitching. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Understitching. Sleeve placket. That might be a little longer. I knew you guys would come through. All right, so we're going to sew this whole underarm seam here. And when you get to these pleats, make sure that you keep them folded and perpendicular at the seam here because see how it's wanting to spread apart right here? You don't want that to happen on the seam line because it'll it'll make it hard to fit it all in there. But once you kind of tidy this up and make that pleat, you know, perpendicular to that edge, it makes this whole long edge line up better like you're not going to have a longer piece. Okay. Here I am, so I'm kind of pulling this down, making sure it's just perpendicular like that. Same with this one. What was that noise? All right, and so I think we line this up right here. Keep that raw edge there. We're gonna go three eighths past this vent. I'm gonna, I don't look at this picture. I've been having a little trouble picturing this. Yeah, three eighths cast. This is the right side. What are we talking about here? This is the wrong sleeve. This is the wrong sleeve. The heck, how did I not notice that during my whole thing of like, make sure the pleat goes this way. Ironing tips, how to organize some, yeah. Emergency substitutions, oh yeah, that's a good one. My linen will be, um, I mean my jacket's gonna be a linen one and then I'm lining it with a lightweight linen. It is personal, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear it. <gasps> I feel like I struggled with that with a couple machines I've owned. You know. Oh, you bought an extension table. That's awesome. Hi, Hannah. I forgot to say hi to you. <laughs> yes, Hannah. Yeah, I'm gonna try and stick to the commercial, the well, the traditional side of things. I think it'll be kind of cool. I'm not much for shoulder pads, but I'm gonna add them to that. 
I think it really does make your jacket, you know, your blazer look nice. My only uh, thing with my blazer is my fabric choices are very springy, you know? So I feel like I don't really get a lot of opportunity around here to wear something like a blazer. And so it probably would have been wiser to pick something that I was gonna use for sure during colder climates color-wise. But I love the fabric so much. And yesterday I was like, you know, you really gotta figure out your fabrics if you're gonna change them out. And then I was like, I don't want to though. I love what I picked. I love the colors. They're gonna be great on camera too because they're kind of light. And um, yeah, I, I'm sticking with it. Because I got a floral print linen. I might get a, a lining for the sleeves so that it's easier to put on and off though. All right. Okay, so ironing tips, organize, emergency solutions. That actually reminds me of something I need to do. Um, it's different seam finishes. It took me so long to make that 60 second video it was so hard to get my camera right here and not bonk it. And then I was looking through the camera and sewing and that was kind of a disaster. So, different seam finishes. Efficient seam ripping. I actually did learn that. <laughs> I mean, I, I did learn that as far as like how to hold the seam ripper when I worked for that really terrible per woman. <laughs> so why did I get this backwards? This is the right, this is the right side. I keep looking at this side because I sewed onto it as if it's the right side. Yeah, so I have these backwards is what's going on here. This is the right side. Double pointed darts. Oh, uh, like a fisheye dart? That's interesting. I didn't see what Malin said. Oh, it's back on top chat. Why is it back on top chat? I put it on live chat. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Yeah. Okay. I liked being able to see my undersleeve as I was sewing it. But I want to start from the top because of where we stop down here at the bottom. All right, so like I said, I'm arranging my pleat to be, you know, I'm like making sure that it's still the same width. Make sure same width. Stop it. Yeah, I had to get over the hump of my machine into the table there. Don't you love it when it still lines up at the bottom when you, you're fussing with everything above and then you're like, oh, I haven't really checked to see how it's going. <laughs> All right, so there is my placket stitching right here and we need to go three eighths past like right here. I wonder if it goes just to that little edge there. All right. Yeah, right, Elena, I know. Oh, I know why it did for me because I actually wrote a message when I logged in and then I couldn't get the emoji screen off. And so it was making the chat that I'm looking at this big. And I watched the chat 
where you guys are watching the chat. Like I don't have a, I have a secret window to use, not secret, but this creator studio, I never use it. And so um, I watch it just like you guys do. And I need to see as much as possible. <laughs> Sometimes there'll be like six things all, all, you know, above. So you bought that all? Nice. Do you like it? Are you using it? All right. So do we top stitch this first? We do the slit and then we do the top stitch and then we go across. All right. All right, so then we're gonna get this piece, kind of like move it out of the way so you don't catch it by accident. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fold this side of our vent, the 3 8 and the 3 8 same thing. Now we're going to let it flop under here. See like that? And we're gonna top stitch our whole sleeve here on the main body of the sleeve, not on the pleated side. And then when we get to that placket down there, we're gonna kind of go across the top and kind of secure all those edges at the top of the vent. Now your, your sleeve is not, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but your sleeve isn't lined and I just completely forgot to finish my edges. <laughs> I haven't, oh okay, I can still do it with my serger. Oh my goodness, we caught this in the nick of time. There is a step in the instructions that says, use a serger all the way around all the sleeve pieces. And I was thinking about that uh, before I started the stream because I was trying to decide, is that what I want to do or not? And I actually thought I had a lot more time to think about it. So. <laughs> That's awesome, I'm so glad. Yeah. It is, it just works so good. This tapered tailor is not the pointy kind. It works really good. All right, I'm gonna do my other sleeve to this point and then I'm gonna take it to the surgery. <laughs> oh. I don't know what you guys are gonna do with me sometimes. All right. So this is my right side. Thing, adjust my pleat here. Make sure that it's folded the full amount on the seam line there. Your pleat will look nicer too. You should always make sure your pleat is lined up on the seam line. I know that seems really obvious, but gosh, when you're in the thick of it, sometimes it's really easy to kind of let it get sloppy because you're worried, worried about so many other things in the moment, you know? All right, so we're gonna fold this out of the way. Actually, we'll do it through this side. I'm gonna fold this, the three eighths and three eighths. After you take out the pen, yeah. Yeah, the all is really, I, I mean, that would be actually a good short. I love it so much. I, and I know that I'm not the only one that uses it. I totally came about it. I, I stumbled upon using my all. And, and I've heard other sewists use it too. So that's pretty cool. Hi, Penny, how's it going? Okay, let's go over to the serger and we'll overlock. Do I wanna do the whole thing? Hmm. No. I 
I think you should have done this before you did your vent. So sorry about that. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go from this side, which is the full sleeve side, because it's got this weird little tuck right here from when I turned it. And I'm going to um, just surge as far down as I can. I wanna be able to see it. I'm not trimming anything off. I'm gonna leave it all in the seam allowance since it is a waterproof coat. This fabric is really thready though, so I didn't really wanna skip this part. So I'm gonna get down here. Just like that. And so when we go to top stitch it, this one goes toward the sleeve, like that's gonna fold that way. So it maybe feel a little awkward with the serger pulling, but it's gonna lay like that. And I can tuck this tail in there. All right, I was just making sure I, the chat was doing okay. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this one from this side as well, but I'm gonna start from the placket end. So I have my machine on a, on a vibration pad, but because the underside of the pad has this peel and stick thing, it is sliding across my table. <laughs> Trade one problem for another, right? <laughs> Doesn't like your hump jumper grading a seam. <laughs> Hi, Florentine, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, the all is a pretty affordable thing to up the sewing game. All things considered, you really get your money's worth for it, right? Um, I already forgot what you said, and it was grading seams. I remembered before I saw it. All right. Okay, so now we have our seam here overlocked and I'm going to take this tail I'm going to trim it down a little bit I kind of wish I would have done this from this side so I had the nicer side of surging so I'm going to tuck it under there I'll tack it so it stays for when I go to top stitch it it'll just look nicer I'm going to get rid of some of these threads I like to do that I like the hands-free thing, you know, cause I'm gonna top stitch this from the right side. So at least now I know that that won't sneak, you know, out of my seam. Make this all look as nice and neat as possible since this is it on the inside of the sleeve. It is not lined. Oh, you're doing some sock knitting. All things considered, <laughs> exactly. It's gonna be all right. This really makes a difference. I don't know if it does on your camera, on your screen, but it does for me. All right, I'm gonna top stitch this down. So I'm pressing the seam towards the cap side, you know, the bigger size of your side of your seat sleeve here. Again, I, even though I've already put this pleat in the seam, it will sit nicer if you kind of arrange it a little bit and just make sure it's behaving when you get there. Okay, now then when we get down to this placket here, I'm going to go across and my seam of my placket right here, it ends right here. Right, my awl is pushed up against it. Here is my back tack for this vent. I think what I'm gonna do is go across right here and line up 
with this back stitch. So it just looks kind of cooler, you know? I can always maybe do one more below, but then see how it looks. Can you see that? Comes down, goes across and down. Let's get rid of those threads right there. It's a little thread of a back stitch. And thread of this back stitch. Just makes it look so much nicer. So that's what it's looking like on the inside. You're gonna have a little bit of your raw edge of your turn back placket up there. It's kind of hard to avoid that no matter what, unless you do some kind of um, different styles of placket. It's not gonna be an issue though. All right, so that's one. That's how it's looking. And let's do this one here. Do my thread tail. Just gonna pull it into the seam allowance and just stitch it down. Do some thread, thread management. I think that that's the one thing, if you're a beginner sewist, manage your threads. It is by far the biggest impact that it will have on your sewing. You could have made a nice little top and the person next to you is uh, you know, squarely in the intermediate sewing realm and they didn't do as good a job, but theirs looks better only because they trimmed all their threads as they went and pressed. It's a big, big difference. So don't skimp on it. All right, so I'm gonna start across this placket here at that spot and then go up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I know, uh, I've seen that thing for sale, that purple thing. I wanted to try it just to see what it, it is because it's been for sale for a long time. So it's held its own. It's obviously considered an essential tool in the sewing world. So it'd be kind of fun to try it, you know? People swear by it, I'm sure, you know? And with, in regards to worrying about the needle hitting it, the thing to think about is, are you uh, someone who likes to pin going across your seam and then you leave the pins in when you sew. Because I do that, when I do a lot of pins, you'll see I just leave them in there sometimes and I sew right over them. And I know some folks get really nervous about that. You can hit a pin. The precision that would take and the likelihood is pretty low, and I have hit one before. Um, but because it's a round, you know, the pin is round, around, um, the needle can push it out of the way pretty easily, and that's the same with the awl. And there's something, I've never hit my awl. If I have, I haven't noticed. Yeah, it's just a plastic long thing, exactly. Hey, Ray, how's it going? You've sewn through your purple. <laughs> yeah, I've sewn through buttons before, like when I'm attaching them. All right, so I think we do the underarm seam now. I am right now on page 16. And we're going to do the underarm seam, which is this one right here. We're gonna finish it, and we're also gonna put the pleat in at the bottom, and then we're gonna attach our cuff. Yeah, it's kind of funny when you do that, when you sew through something plastic, and you're like, wow, I just sewed this thing to my garment, and it's actually attached, nothing broke. I have to like clip the thread and actually get it out of there. The needle's really sharp. <laughs> Get rid of some of these threads. And then I'm going to 
pleat this one. And so when you're looking at which way to pleat it, if your placket is going that way, your pleat folds that way too. So see my placket, this is the, the top. So then this pleat folds that way towards it. So then you have a fold and a fold essentially. And we're just gonna sew it in the seam allowance, but same thing when we go to sew this to the cuff, we need to make sure that we keep it perpendicular and make sure all the edges of your pleat are lined up, all three layers. Makes a big difference. And we all know how frustrating sewing a cuff on can be, so you might as well set yourself up. We're gonna um, overlock that underarm. Hi, Martina. Nice. Give you a little summer, summary of what we're doing right now. So, so far we have finished the back. I fixed the back the other day, or uh, the other day I sewed it upside down <laughs> and we ended the stream. <laughs> so um, I fixed it off camera and then I sewed the side seams together of the jacket. I top stitched the side seams. I did, right? I hope I did. Um, I sewed the shoulder seams together and then I tried it on, even though it's not for me. And then we moved to the sleeves. And so, so far I've sewn the placket, the pleats, the, the two sleeve pieces together. And then now I'm doing the underarm and I'm gonna finish it with the serger and then we're gonna attach the cuff. And then we're gonna go to the um, center front placket with the zipper. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do this pleat. This is quite the curve right here. Hey, why didn't, what? Never had that happen. Wow. Did I just break a thread too? Oh, I did. I don't think I've ever had that happen on a serger. It got kind of hung up. Wait, is this not how you do this one? It's how you, that's how you do it. Wait, how do you do this one? Oh, there it is, okay. This is just the seam, so it's okay if I just redo it from here. I already have a seam in my sleeve. We'll look at it and see. We're just saying no to sewing drama today. Thank you very much. Look at that. We got a big old thing right there. What is that from? I think I'm gonna clip this out and surge it again. I don't know what that was about. I can feel it, it's pretty, pretty stout. Oh, maybe it's a scrap of fabric that got stuck. That's what it feels like. A little scrap of fabric got in there, that's what that is. Really got hung up. This will all be in a seam, thankfully. This is the thread from when I rethreaded my needle. So I'm kind of tempted to do my armhole, but I do sew this to the garment first. So I'm gonna do the do it when I sew it to the garment. Oh, 
it's less bulky if I serge my layers together rather than serging all the edges separately. But I understand the appeal of doing that sometimes. So just do what you like to do there. Yeah, I understand that, Malin. You need the extra stress. Fair point. I rarely do it, but I do it like in places where like my hands are already performing a circus act, holding everything together. Like, you know, like a collar stand, um, like the cuff we're about to do, those kinds of areas. Ooh, can I do that without pins? Let's see. Oh, interesting, Nancy. Really? Nancy, you always have the coolest um, tools. Yeah, Martina, it's finally, we're actually getting somewhere now. All right, I need to press the pleat on this one here. Get rid of this thread here. Uh, so it's going to go this way. I don't know why, but there's people here today, which is really weird. No one's ever here. So if you think about this, like if you don't get your pleat lined up right here, I'm only saying I'm only harping on this because I see people complaining about how to put like putting on the cuff. It never works. It never works. And the thing is, if you even get your pleat. Like say, okay, I've got this lined up and I'm tacking it in the seam allowances. But if it's at all at an angle like this, right here at the seam line, that pleat, like here's, here's the notch for the pleat, right? This fold is almost an eighth of an inch away from where the notch would be hitting the seam line right now, right? Hopefully you can see that. That means that I just made my sleeve a quarter of an inch bigger than my cuff. Quarter of an inch, because it's an eighth and an eighth that's right here that's not folded over here. That's why I stress those things. Always making sure things are lined up on the seam line, what they're supposed to be. Okay. Let's zoom in a little. I keep grabbing the iron thinking it's my mouse. That was weird, okay. Um, machine. You've said you like collecting notions, Nancy. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. I like that you know all those things for us. Yeah, I wanna check that out, Jules. <laughs> So it's got a little flap that can be a micro pressing block and the metal point is textured like an emery board. So is it like a double ended stiletto? Like a stiletto at one end and then this little flat thing at the other? All right, here's my sleeves. Okay, so we have our uh, cuffs here. And remember, I didn't interface my cuffs because I was a little worried about that. So I'm using self fabric. I was told to, to uh, I was taught how to sew over them as well, Jules. I honestly think the whole scare with doing it that way is, is a relatively new thing. And I think a lot of people don't put their pins in perpendicular to the seam. Cause I sometimes wouldn't either. I would be really lazy about it, you know? Cause I loved the pins going like this so that as I got to sewing, I could pull them out. It's just not a good idea. <laughs> it's not, it's nice. Like it feels kind of nice, but um, it can go badly so much easier. See you Betsy. Have a good weekend. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Got my cuff here. And does she do the three sides first? Let's see how she does this. Oh, okay, cool. 
But what I do appreciate is that she sews her cuff the same way I do, where she puts the um, wrong side, or the inside cuff to the wrong side first. I love it. All right, so this one is my front sleeve. So this seam, oh, do we wanna, let's top stitch our underarm seam. That's gonna be tricky, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna top stitch our underarm seam. Let me try and. Hi, Eliza. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, we'll be here for a bit. Me too, Nancy. I mean, um, I could probably disable that. I know, I wish we had a mod here sometimes. Cause then the, um, you could, you could, and then the mod would see it and then they could post it for you. What's it called, Nancy? Do you know? I can, I can put a link in chat. Oh, that's a good point, Barbara. Yeah, I wonder if that's why the advent of more uh, glues came about, you know? Not impossible, just awkward. There we go. And then this will help us um, determine front and back of our sleeve as we go a little easier too. <laughs> I love that. Where do you guys put them all? <laughs> like literally when I get something in the mail, I'm like, okay, what goes <laughs> on my cart? <laughs> Like, I have room on my cart, but I really like everything to be on the top, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh, yeah. Been in, been in those streams before. People try, they still try. And then you see them get timed out. <laughs> I think it's funny. I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> All right, so then we are going to work on the wrong side of our sleeve first. It's stiletto by Annie. Say, I've heard of that, but I don't remember all this other stuff you're talking about. Let me pull it up for you guys. I need more. Because I think something, oh, I found it. Because something else was about to come up that I don't think had anything to do with it. Let's use her. Where's the, f so, so that is sharp. Okay. That is a sharp looking thing. My um, friend used to worry about me being in my old shop and I was like, are you kidding? I have so many weapons there. They should worry. Interesting. Point of the stiletto is sand ground, which means it is lovingly roughed up. This prevents the point from sliding off the fabric and really helps you grab, pull, and hold pieces in place. See, that's, I will say, it's because it's so sharp they needed to do that. Yeah, so um, I don't have to worry about that because it's mine, you know, a chonker, <laughs> as my friend would call it. Your second name is Notion. <laughs> okay. All right, so I have my sleeve right side out. These two pieces are, this is the other cuff. These two pieces are the outer cuff, so it's my cuff and my interfacing, all right? 
Your back bedroom is lethal. Yeah, right? Yeah, she's got, I would actually love to make her, some of her patterns because they're really, um, they look hard and I love that. <laughs> I'm sure they're not. Okay, so this is the inner cuff. And on this is the right side. So we'll, um, we'll mark the wrong side so you can keep track. That's the wrong side of my cuff. So notice that I'm not using the one with the interfacing because this is the inside cuff, right? And so I have my sleeve turned right side out and I'm gonna put this to the inside sleeve here. I'm gonna hang off 3 8 of an inch like this. And we're gonna attach it. And remember, we have these pleats. We gotta make sure that they're nice and perpendicular. And you're just gonna sew it on. Make sure all these threads are to the seam allowance here. And then when you get to the beginning, it should hang hopefully three eighths of an inch off. Mine's hanging about, oh yeah, that's about right, okay. All right, so that's our inside cuff, see that? So then, that's the inside of the garment. This is the outside of the garment, all right? And then we take our other cuff assembly, the outer cuff and the inner facing. It's going to line mine up a little better. Oh, these threads. One side of this fabric is just barely like softer, so it grabs everything. <laughs> right? That's so funny because I want to teach my daughter how to hang up a, like a picture or a painting. And I have this really interesting method for doing it. Okay, wait, we're going to turn the sleeve uh, the other direction now. The reason I do this, you don't have to turn your sleeve inside out and right side out if you have a free arm, but I don't. All right, so now we're going to sew the cuff to the cuff. And we're gonna just go along all three sides here. And I, I wanna be able to see this other cuff that I've sewn. That's why I just turned it so that it's on top. I'm gonna leave that turned up. I have a little trick for this. I, every time I do this, I'm like, I have to remember what it is. All right, so one thing I, I think to think about when you're doing these is Remember that the width of the cuff over here needs to match the width of the cuff over here. So be consistent. You can draw it on there, but we can, we're can. we gonna have an opportunity to adjust those things if we want. And we're just gonna go along this long edge. We're sewing it all right sides together. pivot and come down. And I sew in the uh, seam allowance of this part hanging off. I don't touch the sleeve. So this is what it's looking like right here. So this right here is the cuff, the first cuff we sew, this is the inside of the sleeve. And so right here you can see, right? So this is our outer sleeve, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> my mind didn't go there till you said that. <laughs> All right, so now let's check out the width of our cuff here. And we're gonna do it from this side, right? Because you wanna look at the seam right here and um, the width of your cuff. So you're gonna compare from the seam here to the edge of the cuff here. So let's line this up and see where we're at. That looks spot on right now. 
We know things can shift by the time we get there though. All right, so I'm gonna trim my corner here. All right. And then you're gonna turn it right side out. This fabric, uh, I'm a little nervous to use my all on turning the corners because it's just too thready for that. I really think it would poke out. All right, so now we're on the right side of the sleeve and we're gonna sew our last seam on the right side of the sleeve. And so it's okay that it, the sleeve's inside out for me because I don't have the free arm, right? And now would be a good time to kind of press things and make sure they're arranged. Oh, I'm just so tempted to use my awl right here on this corner. Be really careful. I'm using a pretty short seam length or stitch length. So I, I got lucky that time. All right, so I'm gonna kind of roll this edge right here and just press it a little bit. It doesn't matter what way, I'm just gonna kind of mash it a little bit. That way when I put it on the edge, it'll lay a little nicer. Like this. Okay, so I'm gonna do one little thing here and that is I'm gonna clip my edge here so it stays right on the edge because I think one of the things to worry about with your cuff is that you can um, pull this side more or less and then you get kind of a bubble on one side, you know? So, <laughs> that's funny, Sue. My <laughs> that's so funny, you guys. <sighs> uh. Okay, wait, now my little tip is coming to me. What is it? What is my tip again here? Do I turn this and then fold it? Is that what it is? No, it's not that. Do I, I wrap this around, that's what it is. Okay, so this is one thing I've kind of figured out over the years. I always forget that I figured it out until I'm here. So at this little spot right here, so right now you're looking at, this is the vent right here right, that we sewed right here's the um on the uh, vent seam the the two sleeve pieces together this is your cuff right here's the inside this is the right side of the sleeve right here nope that's the wrong side of the sleeve sorry this is the right side of the sleeve all of a sudden i was like wait that shouldn't be all right and so right here you see all this juncture right here now one thing i have learned is I kind of open this up. So here's my cuff, right? And I wrap this edge around this seam allowance like this. And I'll show you the other ways to do it. And then I turn it under like this and it keeps it nice and clean. So this is normally what you would do. You would just fold this up and fold it back. And look, you have these, your short end of your cuff right there, right? But the problem with this is you have all these little edges wanting to, to sneak out, you know? And they can be thready and they're just a little bit to manage. Let's trim some of these threads here too while we're here, why not? All right, so um, what's the other way to do this? The other way would be if we hadn't sewn this edge or we hadn't, how do I put this? We hadn't sewed this short seam with this pushed up, with the seam allowance pushed up onto the cuff. So we could have sewn the short edge with the seam allowance facing down, but um, that causes a whole nother thing, but there's advantages to that as well. Okay, so this is my little tip is, yeah, turn it. Oh, I have to turn my point again. Yeah, just go back to where it was. Oh no, you're not gonna go back to where it was. Where are you? Okay, there we go. Yeah, so take your short end and wrap it, open up your cuff like this, right? 
vent, cuff, cuff. Just wrap it around like this, that's all. You can even trim this down a little bit if it's giving you a little bit, but my caution when you're doing anything trimming here is don't until you absolutely know your cuff is exactly how you want. And the reason I say that is if you get there, you do all this and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, this cuff end is three eighths of an inch shorter than this one and you've trimmed that corner, you can't add, you can't make it bigger. You can only make it smaller. So it kind of limits you. All right, so now we have all this in there. And look at how nice and clean that looks in there. And it's just easier to manage. And if I could use pins right now, I'd be, you know, pinning in here, right? So for this little spot, you know, I can use a clip right there. And then we'll do this side too. So again, I just open this up right here. And then I, um, I'm feeling left-handed right now. <laughs> I wrap it around the seam allowance. And then I fold it back. That's what it is. I fold, I open it up like this, fold. You know, you basically like, there's another way to look at it. So here's your little short cuff seam right here. We're gonna look at it. This is the seam of it to the sleeve. We're basically going to just continue this fold here, right? So fold your, your cuff edge here, right? And then fold it around that seam allowance. This is the vent. I'm over explaining it and then it's gonna start getting confusing, so. And then when you fold the back on itself, it just looks cleaner. All right. Now this is the right side of the sleeve too. Don't forget that. I'm gonna tuck this in. I take my awl sometimes and I just snug it in there. Hoik. Like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I signed up the, for the fairy, the fabric godmother one, I think. But I haven't got one yet. All right, and so now I'm gonna sew it. Now what I would do if I were you is I would pin all this, right? And you're gonna make sure your cuff is nice and flat and you know, you're lining up the cuff directly across from the side that it was you know, sewn to just like this. Make sure it's all those layers are nice and flat. There's no like bubbling or anything like that. And you know what I could do is I could clip this little edge here. I don't really need to, but why not? You know, let's just give ourselves a helping hand here. So I'm, I'm kind of pulling my cuff so that I make sure that this edge, you know, the side is nice and flat. And then I kind of straighten it out. Cause you can just push that sleeve in there and then all of a sudden you're like, why does my cuff have a bubble on one side, you know? Okay, let's get a little bit in here. It's trying to wrap around so many thicknesses in there. So you really got to kind of go, uh-uh. This is your new home forever and ever. We had a talk. We decided you're the one who has to pull the line at the cuff opening, because we believe in you, your little piece of fabric, you know? All right, and so yeah, I'll take my awl and just slip that in there. All right, so now you're ready to sew. Don't start at the end. <laughs> so tempting, right? Start in the middle over here. So maybe start in your, your underarm seam, you know? Remember, you're on the right side. Don't forget that, okay? We're gonna start over here so that way our back stitch isn't right there at the um, cuff. And we're gonna take that fold and put it just past our stitching because remember, this is the right side. Don't forget. Do you want me to zoom in further? Why does it look blurry? Is it just my glasses? Put this here. 
here to not blind you guys. Is that better? Okay. So here I am with this fold, making sure I'm pulling it, making sure, I'm letting out a little bit of the fold to cover up that first seam. And now we're going to stitch it down. And then I kind of pull my cuff like this. And you can see this is folded a little too shallow, right? So we're going to let it out. I'm pushing my cuff, making sure it's nice and flat. And I'm going to go. I don't need to back tack right now. We'll back tack later. You're trying to prevent torquing. I don't have fusible interfacing, so it's a little trickier. You're preventing torquing. You don't want this edge like to get longer, like it's already looking a little bit longer. So we need to make sure that we get it all in there. And that's partly because, you know, your machine is pushing the fabric towards you, especially if it's thick like mine is. So I like to make sure that this first inch here, I have it like set so that it's not going to um, push toward me a little bit, you know? So I sometimes I'll even overcompensate and press push this folded edge that way a little bit like this, I'll overcompensate it when I'm using pins. Cause I know when my presser foot gets here and it starts pushing it, it's gonna push it all the way to the end and be fine. And that's just little things I've learned over the years. So I try and make this inch like non-negotiable, right? And then I'm going to, see, cause I have my finger there and I'm gonna try and ease all this in here. So I'm pressing that seat or pulling this, the cuff. And partly mine's doing this because it's two layers of kind of boingy fabric rather than one being interfacing. It feels like it's not going good. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna get to this corner now and we're just gonna turn the corner is also why we didn't want a back stitch right there because um, it can be really thick and sometimes your machine will do something really ugly on the underside you know oops I just lost that sleeve and I love the way it just looks seamless all right and so we're just going to keep going we have this nice seamless top stitch on our cuff I give all these tips, by the way, in um, a video that's devoted just to sewing sleeve uh, cuffs and plackets. I have two of them. There's one about a bias placket, which is like the traditional placket. And then I have one with um, the long tower style placket where you have a little point and it looks like a little stitched house. So I give all these cuff tips in that those videos too. So you don't have to like search it in here if you need later. So I'm just edge stitching right now. This is not this is like your, this is your mental break between doing this long edge and going to back to the beginning again and doing one more long edge. I'm really sorry, it's really bright. It's so bright. Probably can't see very well. But we're gonna turn the corner and we're gonna, now you're gonna get to see some good stuff. So now I'm on the short end of the cuff. I'm back at this one end here. And now we're gonna turn. I'm gonna get rid of this clip. All right, and luckily I don't have like, you know, extra cuff fabric here pretty much dealt with it at that end. It was a little tricky. And then this is where my back stitch is, right there. And so I just have this one little back stitch right here on the underarm, somewhere no one is ever gonna look. And then your cuff looks, this, ugh, this thread doesn't make my stitching look very good, but I got it all in there. And, that, and it's very clean, you know, right at these opening edges. You can see a little bit of my thread there. That's something I would consider like, do I wanna like fiddle with or not? You know, this feels almost like this fabric right now, the way it looks and seeing it as a cuff, it reminds me of those mechanics uh, jumpsuits. 
Yeah, and you know, Susu, I'm really dragging out the um, process of that. It really doesn't take more time, you know? And then it'll have a snap like this, and there we go. There's our, our cuff. And make sure, remember, that you got the same width here. Oh, and the other thing I didn't mention is also make sure this vent is the same. Mine was the same going across. I'll show you. Let me get my other sleeve. Ugh. It's like a black hole when it falls on that side. <laughs> so right here at the vent, you need to make sure, like this one's not. You see how my vent on this side is longer? <laughs> that right there is a big problem waiting to happen when we did the cuff. So you gotta make sure your vent is the same. I don't know why it did that, because remember it seemed like it all lined up really perfectly when we were sewing it. It could just be one of those things where the tension kind of pulled it up or something. That's quite a bit. Literally looks like I got it off, but it lined up right there, see? That's the top. <laughs> so who knows? Things happen. All right, so let's let's trim that first and we'll do one more cuff and we'll do a little faster this time but let's get rid of this jog because if you didn't get rid of that your cuff could be perfectly the same width left to right or front to back, I should say, um, but it wouldn't match because it would constantly be being pushed away. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Me too, Sue. <laughs> All right, so let's do our other cuff. Um, this is the body, this is a sleeve. Oh, we lost the cuffs back there too. Eee! I hate it when I have to do that. I feel like when I see people do that, I'm like, it's like the least professional thing ever when you're like grabbing things off the floor. All right. So again, we're gonna start with the inner cuff. And I'm gonna turn my sleeve right side out because I'm sewing from the inside. I'll just go through it quicker this time. I'm gonna lay it down, right side to inside of the sleeve, hang it off three eighths of an inch. I get it arranged once I start, get all my threads there. Making sure that one pleat in the cuff edge is gonna be perpendicular. I'm about to get there now. Here I'm at this pleat, and so let's straighten that so you're making sure it's the same width. Okay, I'm on the pleat so I can let go. Oh, this time I'm, I'm really skint on the uh, seam allowance there. Eek! Give me more, give me more. Ooh, do I wanna deal with that or not? Oh, that is really close. Hmm, we'll try it. <laughs> Where did my cuff go? Hey, Martina, how's it going? Yeah, right, Nancy? I do that too. We're all guilty of that. All right, and so now we're going to uh, sew this right sides together, outer cuff to inner cuff. And I, I will turn it so that it's easier. Now we're gonna be able to see if I can make this like eighth and a half inch uh, seam allowance work. <laughs> you know, Nancy, you just said, yeah, you just said what needed to be said. So true. It's 
this feels like the smoother side, but gosh, that got fuzzy back there. But it's probably really fuzzy back there. All right, we're gonna line this up. I think those kinds of shortcuts sometimes they make us go, all right, what do I want to deal with later on, you know? Because now I, I feel like I'm really guilty of those kinds of things because I'm one of those people that wants to be ultra productive when sometimes being ultra productive just made me ultra waste my time, <laughs> you know? I'm trying to get this a little bit lined up with this here. I might need to straighten that out. This is so, um, why is this so? This is just not much seam allowance right here. It should be way more. So let's check out my cuff width across. I'm kind of hoping it doesn't match so I can, and it doesn't. So that means that I could, this one is bigger, right? I hope it is. Okay. So that means that I'm kind of trying to be clever about it because I want more seam allowance. Hmm. How could I do that? Oh, it's not much different. But. Well, yeah, I'm going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pivot my cuff a little bit so that I have a little more seam allowance. And then it'll get also on track with the width. If you weren't watching, I probably, this would be a perfect example of a corner I would cut. And then when I went to do that last step of the cuff before the top stitch, I would suffer. It would take me four times longer. So that shortcut gave me nothing, you know? <laughs> right, Nancy? Yeah, that's a well-said thing, too. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, like, when I see some folks creating so much, um, I hope that they're wearing it all. Like, if they're wearing it all, that's awesome. It doesn't matter. If they love it and they wear it, that's what matters, you know? But there are a lot of folks I, I see, and I, I'm really honestly thinking about my time spent when I worked at the high school. And I didn't fault these students ever for wanting to just get done, you know? Um, and I would just literally, it's like you're watching the train wreck in slow motion because I wasn't there to tell them how to think about what they liked. That was literally where you know we let them do what they wanted that was that was part of the part part of the magic of it you know they were the designers and so did I know sometimes oh that's not going to work out and would I tell them I would I would tell them I would just say all right so here's your risk um and then I would tell them very clearly and simply but non-judgmentally you know and I'd just be like this is what you're probably going to be dealing with you know and, and oftentimes they thought they knew better, <laughs> you know, so hence the train wreck begins. All right, so I'm just trying to get as much seam allowance as possible here. Lining up, I'm making sure my cuff right now matches. It's so zoomed in, you can't even tell. Here we go. You hear the short ends, but I'm also trying to steal a little bit of seam allowance here, like that. That helped. All right, and so then this is where, if you don't have chalk, do you guys know about, oh, where'd that doodad go? The Hera marker? Or you can't use chalk is what I should say. 
Oh, what did I do with that? I just was using it yesterday. Shoot. Well, it's like a white thing, and, and then what it does is you go like this to the fabric with it, and it makes a, like a, kind of like a crease, you know? And then that way you don't have to use chalk if you, if you can't. All right. All right, so I, I re got a little bit of my seam allowance back there. Not much, though. Holy heck. All right. All right, so let's trim our corner here. Two more steps for these cuffs. And then we get to do the zipper. Libby, how's it going? Yeah, no worries. We were talking about, well, I, be, I was doing a really in-depth like tip on how I fold the inside of my cuff and there's like a really subtle little thing you can do. And it took, like I was over explaining it basically and spending a lot of time on it. And they were like, well, these are the kinds of things that really make things better. And then we just had like a little conversation about, you know, we still skip things <laughs> and what happens, you know, we're all guilty of it. There we go. Oh, Ray, thank you. Oh, my alerts are off. Oh no, they're not. <laughs> Turn it back on. Never mind. <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank you. I got a $20 donation on my website yesterday from somebody. I was like, what did someone find on my website to buy for $20? <laughs> I was like, that can't be a donation. And it was. And that reminds me, in August, just to, to give you a heads up, everybody, um, I'm going to make everything. This is going to sound crazy. I'm going to make everything that is shippable, like all my physical product, like fabric, you know, kits and things like that. All of it's going to be free in August. Hi, Vestigia. How's it going? <laughs> you want some new drama? How dare you? <laughs> um, so, so that basically that means like pocket bucket kits, project bag kits. So if you want just fabric for things, all you have to do is pay for shipping. And then um, there's going to be a few other things on there. The only thing that won't be free is the webbing for the wallaby and my patterns. There are free patterns on there, though. So, so don't buy anything until August because I need some time to set it up. <laughs> okay, so here's my little tip again. Uh, what I do, I open up this little... Um, you know, I open up my cuff end here and I push the seam allowance of this under cuff towards the outer cuff. That's a great way to say it. And then I wrap the outer cuff around the under cuff like that. that all, the, all the interfacings there, they're all pushed up into the cuff. This right here is the vent. This is the cuff seam. It's all very, very confusing looking right now. And I'm wrapping it around just like that. We're on the right side of the cuff as well. Oh, let's trim these two threads because they're going to make my life um, have a little bit of a headache, which I do not need. Just trim those really close. I love these scissors for that. Turn, turn. I'm not going to pull any of those threads and clean them up because it's too thready. I'll be in a never ending circle of pulling threads. <laughs> All right. How are you doing, Libby? Is your daughter still here for a bit? Here it is again. Hold it open. This one, I'm kind of cutting it close right here. So let's get rid of some of these little threads here. There we 
They just make things a lot harder to look clean right here. Because we're on the right side of the garment. See, there's my underarm seam. I'm going to, this, since this seam allowance right here is so narrow, I'm actually going to trim this down a little bit. I don't like doing that, but I am going to do a little bit. Cuff seam, end of the cuff. Cuff, uh, this is the end of the cuff actually, and this is the turn under edge. All right. My daughter is so cute. Like she is still living alone because her friend hasn't joined her yet. And um, she's going on a little adventure hike thing to a waterfall today. And so she is sharing her location with us to make sure she gets home safe. <laughs> and and you, I know you're probably thinking, oh, she's doing that because she thinks we're worry warts. No, she's the worry wart. <laughs> I think the world could have used a lot fewer murder podcasts, in my opinion. <laughs> it's just my opinion, though. <laughs> Until Wednesday. Oh, nice. Okay, so I'm not going to pin this long edge here. I ended up just, not pin it, but clip it. I'm just going to go for it. So, like I said, I always start on the, um, at the underarm seam, which is about right here. Got this whole cuff flat. I'm just gonna go for it much faster this time. Make sure I can fit all of this fabric in there. There's no slack. My cuff looks a little crooked. I need like one half stitch. I hate that. You know? Okay, now I'm just edge stitching the edge of the cuff. corner doesn't look that great. Please don't pull the thread out. Dang it. Why am I on this half stitch thing now? <laughs> All right. Now we're getting back onto our cuff. Oh, pushed away a little bit. And so make sure all this is nice and straight. When I turn the corner, it looks so good before you sew it, doesn't it? Then you sew it and you're like, why did it all get squished? Like I stepped on my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know. Looked good when you put it in the bag. All right, so we can't, I can't really pull my whole cuff out to check it. I'm noticing some tension issues here. I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. I thought I just saw some. all those threads under there. Now I can straighten it out, make it nice and flat, make sure I don't have to ease anything in. I have, feel like I have a little easing, so I'm just going to use my awl. Clip this thread here. Got all that easing in there. It's pretty good. All right. How'd you do? <laughs> oh, yeah, right, Jerry. <laughs> okay. Let's unzoom a little bit. 
And now we're going to be doing the zipper and the facing, the center front. It's going so slow. Okay. Here's our center front. And all of our facings here. I think we do the left front first. And zipper. Make sure you have all the notches on there because they are for zipper placement. And you're gonna need them. So your pattern piece has this little curve right here that is the neckline and you need to fold it along this dotted line and see this little notch here. Now I think you could, I'm pretty sure I'm hoping that I'm not forgetting something, but I think you could have the zipper tape go all the way up to the raw edge. And then you don't have to fold it back. I'm pretty sure you could do this all the way up there. And as long as your zipper, like this has a two inch hem, as long as your hem can clear the zipper, my, my zipper was about an inch longer than what was specified. So. We're still zoomed in too far, huh? Oh yeah, we're really zoomed in. All right. I've read these four times. All right, left placket, um, left and right always refer to how you're, as if you were wearing the jacket, so your left. Um, and you're gonna take your left front placket and you're gonna fold it in half, but you don't really need to do that yet. You're gonna, cause you're gonna sew it to the, the front just along one edge. And this is one thing I kept reading over and over cause I was like, well, wait a minute. How would that work if it's just, if it's, cause you fold it wrong sides together and then um, you sew it to the, the left front, but you're only sewing one edge. And that, that should probably be really clearly stated because you can't sew both edges, like fold it in half and then sew it to your center front, you're gonna get into a pickle, all right? So, all right, so let's put this um, right sides together and we're gonna sew along this front edge here. I'm just making sure you can do it like this too, but um, we'd have to go from the bottom. So I'm just gonna start from the top. Line up your neckline. Pretty sure this will be shorter than your jacket too. This one is much easier than the Kelly Anorak, by the way. And because it's a facing, because of the lining, uh, the collar is pretty simple too. Oh, this one does go all the way to the end. I think it's the other one that's shorter. And she says so. She reminds you, like, don't, you know, don't worry. <laughs> Maybe it's the facing that's shorter, we'll see. Oh, you know what, you guys? Um, if the, for those of you who know, I have this deer that comes. We haven't seen him in a while, George. We've called him George. And yet we haven't seen him since like well before we left on our trip. And then he showed up yesterday and he had a friend. 
boyfriend. And uh, the, the boy, other boy was really skittish and was like, wait a minute, where'd you bring me? Um, and then I walked out there because I was like, George, you're here. And he walked right up to me and just sat there sniffing my face. I was just like, please don't lick me. And then, um, and then he kind of wandered off. He loves going to our solar panels because there's this one bush he loves to eat, which he's eaten. It's gone. Uh, but his friend kind of hopped across the creek and just waited for him there. I was so excited to see him. I'm so glad he has a buddy now. Maybe his buddy will give him more, you know, street sense, I'm hoping. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so let's see. We are going to attach this zipper. So, like I said, I may be doing some ripping later, but I'm pretty sure you can put the zipper all the way up to the top edge if you're, um, the length is gonna work. So one thing you need to remember is that like this notch down here is for where your jacket is supposed to um, stop. Where is it? Why is the notch on the face, the, the facing when you sew it to this? I mean on the placket. Or maybe I just forgot to notch it? Oh yeah, I did, okay. <laughs> Here it is. I double checked this too. Not good enough. I maybe only did the other pieces. Yeah, and so there's a notch up here as well. So. Um, I do, Nancy, but if I think if you spent any time in men's sewing realms like Instagram and stuff, you you'd probably hear them talk about fit. They they talk a lot about um, sleeve and um, pant fit, just like we do. Maybe I should switch to my zipper foot. I don't have interfacing on mine, so this is the right side. I think I wanna to switch to my zipper foot. I don't like, someone was just raving about the zipper foot, but I'm not a big fan. There's just not a lot of purchase on the, uh, the fabric, you know, so it slips more. Fine. My needle might be too big. No, it's not. <laughs> I was a little worried there. But it sure is close to the edge. <laughs> you think so, Sue? My zipper is face down. Now, um, I always give my little spiel about zipper tape. Uh, zipper tape can be, it's kind of its own beast. And so what I always find is that, um, if you're sewing fabric on top of the zipper tape, like if this were flipped over, the zip, the fabric is not going to stay the correct length. So I try and always sew from the zipper side. Now, if you were, if you had this sandwiched, sorry, between two uh, layers of fabric, the top layer is going to be too big by the time you're done. All right. So now you're going to sew this to the other edge of your facing this. Let's kind of get an idea of how it's going to look. So I think being able to visualize how it's going to look is really helpful. So here is your placket. It's actually your flap. I don't know why it's called the whatever it's called. It's a flap and then it lays on top of your facing. That's not right. That's not right. It's not right sides down. You have to do this wrong sides down. 
Yep, wrong side down. Good thing I checked. Whoops. See, you won't make this mistake now. I kept picturing us doing the right side. I think I could just rip it. Oh, really, Nicole? Hi, Nicole, how's it going? So are you wearing it as a dress? Is it on the bias? How do they sew the binding? Are they of the um, camp let you uh, fold the binding wrong sides together, iron it, and then you sew it, the rajas, and then you fold that fold over? <laughs> yeah, Sue, I can I can see that. It's it is so funny because my husband, he under like he he. He would be that same way, but he trusts me, you know? Like, I never see him wear the Jutland pants. I think they're just too big. It is not on the, oh. They use cross-cut binding? Yeah, that sounds hard. I really hoped I would be able to work with them. They seemed pretty open to it, and then I... I think I must have done something to make them upset <laughs> because all of a sudden there was just like nothing. I was like, oh, maybe I, sh I, I, in fact, I'm wearing the dress I made from the sagebrush top. Maybe I hacked it too much and they didn't like that. I was pretty excited that they were like, yeah, we'd love to work with you sometime. And then... And it's funny because I have two patterns of theirs I want to sew soon, and I'm like, do I do it? Oh, the binding. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Nicole. Oh, okay. So how do they sew the binding then? That is different than how I do it. Do they pre-fold it? There's so many ways. People have their own preferences. You know, lots of right ways to sew it. But um, I think it just depends on what you like, you know. Okay. Wrong side together. I kept looking for a finished picture of how this all looks, and I just couldn't, I couldn't find it. This is the right front. Where's the left front? So let's look at how it's going to look. I think it's sometimes good just to lay all the pieces the way it's going to finish. And so this facing gets sewn on the inside here like this. And so this is your flap as you're wearing it, right? So you need your zipper right side up like that, you know? Oh, yeah, that sounds kind of hard. <laughs> Uh, I know, do, do, so do they fold the binding like um, this? Because I, I kind of like this method, but I'm not very good at it. So they take their binding, fold it in half, and then you sew it right sides together, and then you fold it over like this. And then that way you don't have to worry about folding under the edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is a really cool way to do it, though. I, I find it really hard to maintain the width. Um, and really, it keeps you more honest. So in a way, it'd probably be good if I got good at it. <laughs> that thread in my hair? Yeah, I can see it. All right, I'm just making sure I got all these threads gone. Just one right here. I got a black zipper because I didn't have navy blue, but it looks pretty good. Wait, did they not have navy blue? Maybe they had navy blue, but they didn't have it 
in this finish. I didn't want brass. All right, so I'm going to have to sew this from the bottom to the top. Oh, it's pretty, pretty narrow. Really? Usually I feel like people do really wide. And they always say mine's so narrow. But I, I have a lot of quilter friends, so they like two inch wide binding. I had to do that for my uh, quilt behind me and on, on my daughter's and I was like, ooh. It was hard. See, it totally wiggled and it's trying to be off now. Okay. All right, we're back on track. So I like this because then this can be in the in the seam right here. Why does this still feel wrong to me? I have to look at this again. I don't, I'm not trusting it right now. So this is, oh. That's not right. Yeah, that's not right. That's not right. Because if this is folding here, what am I doing wrong? So I have this flap here, and then this gets sewn. Right here. Oh, I did it to the wrong side. I did the wrong side. Gosh darn it. I was too sleepy when I looked at this. Sorry. See, this is, this is one of those steps that you probably shouldn't do when you're feeling rushed because if you rip it, then, you're, then you just added way more time, right? Okay, I get it. I told you it was easier. I promise it is. I'm overthinking it. Just bear with me. All right, let's see here. Get rid of all my thread. Get rid of all my thread. All right. All right, so this goes like this. <laughs> right? So it goes like this so that when you turn it to the inside, this is sticking out. That's what's going on here. All right. Phew. You probably figured this out before me because you have interfacing and you could tell what the wrong side of your fabric was and your pattern piece. Yeah. 
Okay. Third time's a charm. First time we did it uh, right side down. This time we're doing it wrong side down. Good thing that the uh, waterproofness of this seam isn't as critical since it's inside the garment. Oh my gosh. Oh, thanks, Nicole. <laughs> I'm persevering. <laughs> Night, Jules. Sleep well. <laughs> you just made a suggestion, Rance. I like that. You made a command, and she used the command. <laughs> All right. Phew. All right, and so then you're going to sew this to that flap. Right sides together. Um, I normally would never do this in two steps either. I would have done all that in one step and I probably would have caught it, but you never know. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna put this together here. The whole center front length here. Whoops, this is shorter, that's right. Yeah, the facing is shorter than the jacket. Pull this down a little bit, and then I'm gonna raise it up now. I'm wondering where this goes to. I would like to see. Basically, you're just going to line up your notches. Which are right here. And yeah, look at that. I have a lot more uh, because of the zipper. Probably could have eased all that in. I think I looked for it now. All right. There we go. This is your flap. It'll fold along that edge there. Uh, then we, we do end up stitching in the ditch later on because you don't want to do any top stitching at this point. You could stitch this right here, that would be fine, um, because we're gonna fold this facing back on itself like this and put the, the collar in the neckline. You've left everything in the ratio. Are you making this one, Vestigia? <laughs> I'm gonna top stitch this. Probably not gonna go all the way to the edge though. I'm just gonna go, maybe I'll just start at the zipper. Just so it, I don't like top stitching. Hopefully I don't regret this. My machine's kind of like, uh-uh, I don't wanna do that. It's probably the zipper tape and using a zipper foot. Yeah, it's not a hard uh, zipper, flat, zipper thing, but um, I couldn't figure out like what does it like for me I need to see how it finishes and then I can figure it out you know some folks can follow the directions and they just do it the way the directions say and for me I obviously I can follow directions sometimes but at the same time sometimes my mind is like trying to figure out what it's doing and making decisions um, on its own and I need to trust the directions and I'm not. Okay, so remember this right here is your fold line of your placket, I mean your flap, like that, okay. And your zipper's back there, right? 
and on no sleep. That is exactly how I'm feeling, Ray. Hi, Tammy. How's it going? Sorry if I'm making you nauseous right now. I'm trying to get the, it to at least look straight. All right, so let's do the other side. We have the right front. And I don't know why I'm looking at this. <laughs> right front. All right, so we are going to attach the zipper to the right front. Well, then is this a zip extension? Not a facing or flap? It says placket. I need it. I'm looking for the finished look here. All right. Oh, you do press it in half lengthwise. So it's basically an under zipper, uh, zip extension is what we called it. And so it's gonna protect your garment from getting zipped into the zipper. So. <laughs> All right, so same kind of thing. All right, I think I got this. Famous last words, right? All right, so this is the bottom. And so this time we're gonna sew the zipper. We can take this off too, by the way. We need a separating zipper. We're gonna sew it to the center front if I can find it. to the right front, as if you're wearing a garment. You're gonna put it face down. Don't get it flipped. It'd be pretty hard to do that. Your uh, zipper would be upside down or something. Come on, get on there. My machine doesn't like the, the little like plastic at the end of the zipper tape that's, you know, keeping it all together. All right, so what are the hazards right now? The hazards right now are that if, when you go to zip this up, your yoke seam isn't gonna line up. So some of the things you could do is, you could have left your zipper zipped together right now, right, or before we did this, and then you can kind of chalk on this zipper where that yoke seam was. You can't even see it though, like uh, it's pretty far away from where it's sewn. So here it is right here. So you see there's the yoke seam right there and there's the zipper. So you could kind of do your best to figure out if you were close like this and go, okay, is my yoke seam, you know, is it lined up? So that's the kind of uh, risks we're running now. The, the good news is that it is really far away from the, um, the, the other sides, you have all this placket, so you might not notice. Right? I don't know if this one's a, a, a considered an easy pattern. It's obviously not like, there's nothing we've done that is like, we're not jumping through fiery hoops or anything. Right? It's all been pretty straightforward. I've made it a little harder. I'm gonna look at the bottom here and line up where the zipper is in relation to that. I am having to stretch it a little bit. Remember, you you know, I've never sewn one of these and you probably haven't either. So if you're sewing it, you're trying to do something really nice on your first try. 
You know, like, if you want it to be really nice, you sew a couple, right? <laughs> and we don't do that. All right, so let's see. Here is our little zip extension, which is, goes under the zipper. And it gets sewn uh, to the zipper and then the facing. So same kind of thing. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's what it is. Oh, wait, this is the... Is this the top edge? I think this is the top edge. Oh, I see, I have a... Uh... Oh, yeah, 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 that's the top edge. I thought one looked kind of curved, but I guess not on this piece. I don't have interfacing, so. Come on, get on there. All right, so this is the narrower zip. It's called the right zip placket, I think. And it goes right sides together to the zipper. Right? Yep, and then we do it to the facing. So you could have done this all in one step. The good news is too that we're not doing any top stitching at this stage. So that does give yourself the opportunity to um, maybe fix things later on if you're finding like, ooh, you know. <laughs> right, Nicole? see mine is extending about a quarter of an inch past so that is probably because like I say this zipper tape always has kind of a mind of its own and there's something about it that is it's really inflexible and I feel like it draws your fabric together so it's drawing your whole your front together and that is on the piece that's under it so if the zipper is on top of this piece this piece kind of it's pretty well behaved but when you put a piece of fabric on top, it kind of does this, it kind of stretches out. And I don't know if you've ever um, accidentally cut a zipper tape too much, or you, you feel if you feel it, just the tape itself, it's very um, flexible. Like it feels very flexible, but that edge that kind of finishes it makes it inflexible. It's kind of a really weird thing. I, I don't know how to put it, but I've sewn enough zipper in between layers to know how fiddly it can be, and it's not you. It is definitely zipper tape. All right, so I need that one last pattern piece. That's smart, Susie, I love that. Yeah, that's practical. What would I consider my palette cleanser? I like thinking about that, hmm. I think just a good old fashioned woven garment, honestly. All right, so then we're gonna do this facing right sides together to the zip extension. Mine's not ironed because I don't have the ironing capability. See, this little notch here makes me nervous on this because it's like, okay, wait, we don't have uh, that. I'm gonna switch back to my presser fit. We don't have a zipper to go to that notch. So I'm like, hmm. Is it? Oh, it's only 125. We did a lot today. I feel a lot better. Probably go for another half hour. See how we get. If anyone's in the, I think it's the fourth Saturday Zoom, that's today. Match up your notches. Oops, wrong edge. Did 
So you sometimes see my thread go like that. I guarantee that that's probably a little like, well, it's not, hmm. That's when I worry that it's doing a weird little like tension thing because of this weird thread I'm using. Oh, pillowcases. What do you like to use for your pillowcases, Terry? Because I actually think that'd be kind of nice. They take a lot of fabric, so you can use up a bit. But I find quilting cottons to be kind of rough, you know? And people love making them, and I'm like, huh, I don't want to sleep on a quilting cotton pillowcase. I made myself, or made my someone one, I, then I felt it, and I was like, oh, I can't think I can give this to them. <laughs> Maybe it was for a charity thing, and I was like, oh, I don't know about this. I can't remember. Oh yeah, it was a camp, it was after the campfire. Wow, I never checked my waist seam and oh, it actually turned out okay there. That's great. I didn't I didn't top stitch my side seams. All right, so here we go. Here's how it looks. This gets folded here. I have a little bit of like finagling to do to make it all lay nice. Okay, so this is the right front here. And this is what the inside looks like. So here's the facing. Usually this is all one piece. This whole thing would be one piece and then you would fold it there or this would be a piece right here, and then this would be a seam right here. And sometimes that's because the seam gives a stability factor. I'm kind of glad it's not because it's a raincoat. All right, and then here's the left front right here. So this one goes like this, right? Imagine if you're doing this in canvas, it would be pretty stout. All right, so when it's zipped, it's gonna look like that. Right, so you have your flap over there, your zipper there, your facing, all right? For those of you struggling and you need some visuals, that's what's happening there. All this is gonna get top stitched and look cleaned up by the end. You don't do that yet. It's really tempting to make it look nice. Don't do that because you need this to be loose because we're gonna put the collar in. So I think the next step is putting this facing on. I know is right here. Yep, right here. So you're gonna get your back neck facing. It's time to just move these pieces out of the way. I still have my pattern sleeve here. Okay, so we have our shoulder seams. If you wanna put a cute little um, tag. This would be kind of the nice place to do it right here. I'll probably, mm, where will I do mine? This is the little free one that you get in a maker's fabric order. It's like twill tape, but nicer, a little smoother. I've got two of them now. Do I want it up there? I feel like it's kind of scratchy for there. I think I'll put it there. And then um, I think we need that one that, do I have one that says made with, oh yeah, made with love and swear words. That might be a good one this time to use. That's awesome, Sue. Oh, okay, Nancy, <laughs> see you. <laughs> Oh, bye, Nicole. See you later. <laughs> yeah, um, she's really liking these sew-alongs, too, so I might help her out with some video, maybe. I don't know yet. Let's see. Made with love and swear words. Could I get this on without changing my thread color? That's the real question. Let's see. Ooh, let's use one of my new pins. Mm, 
No, that's not gonna work. Okay. I'm just too eager. You know what? That's not the center. That is. Okay, there we go. I can get this one right sides together. Now can I get this one? Is this too fiddly? Sometimes I just love a personal challenge, you know? I think I just ran out of bobbin thread. I didn't run out of bobbin thread, so is the sewing fairy trying to tell me something? Um, you know what, Libby, all these, like, these right here, I have to look it up. I could tell you. Uh, but all those others, I didn't buy them. They, like, this one right here came in a, a needle sharp box. And then the that handmade goodness came in a, um, the maker's fabric box. Um, so, or order. So yeah, I, I have I've these cute ones. You you know, there's like obviously Kylie and the Machine is pretty famous for all of her labels. Um, but yeah, mine they were pretty affordable. I'm about to run out. So, well, like soon for me. All right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm getting a little punchy, so I gotta I gotta be nice to myself right now. sticks to itself so that's why I have trouble with it. Left handed. Because my brain can handle that right now. <laughs> Now I can just place it. I don't recommend doing it this way. I could have changed, literally changed my thread color right now, by now and just sewn it in. But we won't talk about that. This will also, well, I, this would, it would have been a non-issue, but it does hide this kind of chunky thread that's kind of scratchy. Made with love and swear woods and a crooked label. <laughs> the bobbin was filled still. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll look this up and put it and give it to you. Somewhere in New York. They're very easy to deal with. You can do whatever you want. It's kind of overwhelming. I used the max number of, th of thread colors, so they had to kind of like combine colors. And I, I just honestly was just like, can I use this, this graphic? And they were like, yeah. I was like, really? Okay, let's do it. And I think next time I'll probably put some text on the back that says so-so or something like that so that people are like, what is this garment from, you know? I never thought anyone would see them. All right, so let's do our facing here. We're gonna sew the shoulder seams of the facing. You can see my facing looks a little bit off up there because the, the interfacing layer. So I'm just gonna go by the uh, fabric, not the interfacing layer. We can trim the interfacing to fit like we normally would, right? And then our other one. Line it up on the seam line. This is definitely one of those areas. Shoulders is always where I end up mentioning it because um, if you line it up on your raw edge, whoa, that was okay. 
Yeah, see I have this little point there. That's fine because then you get this nice smooth transition. That's why I have to line it up on your seam line. I was doubting it because my interfacing was hanging off. Okay, I don't know what's next. <laughs> right, Ray, you would sit there and be like, I can do it. <laughs> I'm not gonna change my thread color. All right, so now we're gonna do the collar. I thought that was last. All right. So, because the way this collar is sewn in, you get to sew the top perimeter of your collar together first. And mine is four layers of fabric. There's no top or under collar because it just stands up like a Mandarin style collar, which I'm realizing now will probably be renamed to maybe stand, collar stand style. Ooh, we're gonna have something that actually looks like a jacket today. How exciting. And this is, that would be the point where, you know, you would definitely wanna be trying it on to that person, but do I dare? All right, what are you worried about here? Uh, that your curves are symmetrical left to right. I'm kind of notorious for not getting that, you know what I mean? I got your vibe. Yeah, I knew exactly what you meant, Ray. <laughs> Ray Ann and I would always joke around about that. Like we would sometimes, we were very, very productive for being two people working together. You know, like the dangers of you just ending up, you know, chatting or whatever, or just not getting as much done are, are pretty high sometimes. But ooh, sometimes we were both kind of into the experiment, you know, and... Um, we would totally hair off into a different direction or be stubborn about it. And she's like, I know I could do that, but I don't want to now. Now I'm, I'm like out to get it. <laughs> and I would be like, I, I hear you. It, it didn't matter to me. Like if she could be potentially saving time somewhere. I was like, yeah, no, I understand that. I, I totally understand that, you know. If you're doing something repetitive all day long. I, I feel you needing that one little win here and there. All right, so let's turn this. Put a lot of clips in that curve. It'll curve nicer the more clips you put in there. And press it really nice. All right. I feel like we lost a lot of viewers from Thursday because they probably had no faith in me. I don't blame them at all. All right, we're gonna, I'm gonna press this a little bit. Plus it's Saturday and people wanna do fun stuff. They don't have a fire raging in their area. They can go in outside, smell clean air. Okay, this looks really nice. This fabric is really good for a curve like this. I mean, look at how nice that looks. Whereas I feel like when I do a collar collar stand, you know, just in cotton or something similar like that, it looks a little bit like, ee, 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 you know, and I have to go back and trim it. This looks really nice though. It's a little boingy. And I feel like then that's the risk that you'll get like torquing happening, you know, it'll slide along there. All right, so let's top stitch this. Cause it's gonna go into a seam. We can top stitch this now.
you get a smoother curve if you try not to stop. All right. There's a little bit of a swoop in this collar and that's so that it lays really nicely. And now you're gonna put it right sides together to your jacket. I, I always start at the center back, which is right here. And then um, I'm not gonna pin too much because we need to fold this facing over it like this. And so this right here goes to, where is it? Does this go? I thought there was a notch. There is a notch for sure. Oh, it's the fold line of each of your um, extensions or plackets. That's right, it's soldered day for you. So there's no notch at that fold line. It's a dashed line on the pattern. So I'm gonna need to find mine. Do I wanna top stitch that other zipper? Can I anywhere? I wonder. Oh, let's get this long thread to the inside here. And we're gonna line up this. So here's the zipper and here is the seam. Let's get this thread behaving a little bit better though. You see that little loop right there? Let's try and get rid of it. See this right here? I'm pretty sure yeah, that comes from the right side. So look at this, I'm gonna, so I have a little loop on the underside of the top thread. And so now I'm gonna slide it down my all. Do you ever do this? Hopefully you never have to. And then there we go. Now that tension issue is fixed right there. Cause that can be kind of scratchy against the neck, you know? Label shop, does custom ones. Oh, cool. Ah, I can't remember the name of the one I went, it might be them. You know? All right, so I'm gonna fold it back on itself like this, lining up all these seams. The lighting in here is not great today. It looks like it's overcast here and that's literally smoke. It's like a big cloud above us right now. It's weird because usually if it's that smoky, on the ground it's smoky too. And you can smell it, but you can't see it really unless you like look across a valley or something. All right, and so this does line up, right, like that. Is that a notch right there? This doesn't feel like, that does line up to that. Interesting. Was there a notch there? Is there one on this side? Hmm. It lines up to that. It must be. We'll see in a second. I want to use pins so bad. Yeah, it probably does go there. And that's because the, you know, your yoke seam usually isn't an indication of um, it being the shoulder because sometimes the yoke comes forward on the body. All right, so here is the other, this is the right front. Same thing, here's that fold line right there and I think the collar goes to that. So many thicknesses there. All right, let's look at this zipper though. This is gonna go this way. See now I feel like, oh, I really wanna top stitch that. I'm not gonna, because we have to, we still have to fold this back on itself and top stitch it later. Probably design this a little differently. 
it works really well. Like it's pretty easy to sew. Um, my worry right now is that it won't look as good as I can make it look. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, really, Penny? Yeah, definitely your sun's not red when, when you wake up in the morning and go to bed. Oh, wait, this isn't it. Well, that has to fit in there. That's just too much. Look at that. Maybe I am stopping early, just so I know I'm doing this right. Hmm. It goes to the fold line there and there. I don't think I can get all that in there. What the heck? See, now that would work. Okay. If I put the collar off center, it works perfect. How funny. It's always a little fussy because you um, haven't clipped your, your uh, neckline yet. And I don't recommend clipping it before you sew. It's so hard to make sure you get all of those little clipped edges. You're lining it up on the seam line too. I really want to notch here. I might be too hungry for this. Let's see. Oh, that works. It works. It all works. It doesn't feel bad. It just doesn't feel good. <laughs> I don't remember that. But that was such a good movie. I'm just gonna start sewing. I know that probably sounds risky to you guys, but I feel like I can do a better job by sewing it. So let's see, this one here. This one here, the zipper I think needs to, oh yeah, stay just like that, okay. So that one goes like that. And then this one, the zipper needs to point that way. All right, let's make sure we have it pointed the correct way. All right, let's just try. Maybe I won't even put a back stitch in just so I can uh, come back and adjust it. All right. So lining it up on the seam line of the neck is gonna be really what makes it all work, pretty sure. The collar is gonna be fiddly because you're putting it into this pretty serious curve. Right, my zipper tape is going up to the neckline but not any zipper teeth, so I'm not really worried about that. not hard it's just a lot of layers and this goes that back yeah like that that's a shoulder seam you just gotta make sure you catch all the layers you can always go back take out a little section if, you know maybe the collar dropped down below a little bit a little hard when it's the collar and you got to like ease it in 
But um, if it's just one layer of your collar, then maybe you can ease that in. And I'm, like I say, I'm lining it up on the seam line, three eighths of an inch away from the edge, except right there. That just dipped down, just like I said. Let's just take out a couple inches, see right here? To, or well, not even a couple inches, just up to this notch here. I'm not a very good nap taker, I have to admit, but um, a couple times since I've been sleeping in the cottage with Ollie, before dinner, I'll just sit in my chair, um, kind of catching up on everything for the day, looking at all my texts and everything, and um, I will doze a little bit waiting for dinner. And my husband will arrive with it on a plate upstairs in my like little room, my little room that I hang out in next to the bedroom. And I'm like, I can eat dinner with you. You don't have to bring it up here. He's like, oh, it's okay. I thought you were just enjoying a show or something. <laughs> Pretty cute. Makes me feel a little too pampered. All right, so let's see. We're getting down to the wire here. So let's see what we have in the way of what's left. What could you do to make this easier? I actually think what you could do to make this easier is attach the collar to the jacket without the facing, clip the neckline, and then add the facing. I think that that might feel a little better and less nerve wracking. It all is going in there really easily. It's just that you're having this straight edge to a curve edge, you know, so it, it wants to fight you. All right, do I have the zipper going the right way? It needs to go this way, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna press the seam allowance allowances towards the body of the jacket because I can on this kind of treatment. All right, I'm not going to back stitch it. And let's just see how I did. See if I have any tucks or anything and see how it works. Okay, it looks good on the outer jacket. We haven't clipped our curve yet. Everything looks okay on the facing. That was actually really easy. It just felt weird. So let's look at how it's working. The reveal. I don't want this to feel like it's torquing and it's because there's no um, ironing yet. I don't have any seams clipped. I'm gonna clip it and it'll look a lot better, but let's make sure we got it right. All right, we have our zipper going the right way, right? Give it a little whirl. So dark, I'm sorry. Yeah, and so then this will have the fold there. And on the inside, you know, there's the fold like that. It looks like this on the inside. So there's one drawback to putting the zipper tape through the neckline is that it doesn't get into the neckline, it, uh, into the collar. It's actually folded back on itself, pushing down. So it adds a little bit of a bulk. You know what I mean? Because it's going that way rather than into the collar like it normally would. All right, so let's clip the neckline. And then we'll have a better look. Now I just want to keep going. <laughs> yeah, right, Barbara, it does make that 
in a sense, like, oh, you don't have to do the clean finishing thing, you know? I think that makes it less daunting. And that's why I think, like, this is actually a really, oh, I just went right through. This is a really great, um, you know, not too advanced jacket. I'm making it look really hard, but if you're doing it in a natural fiber, not, you know, not live on camera, I think it would be a lot more, you know, easy. This is really thick. Cuts pretty good though. Take my time. Oof, that's so thick right there. Lots of clips though, so you get a nice curve and it lays nicely. I think we don't ever put enough of these clips in. And they're really what makes it um, work because remember, this whole seam edge is going into the body of the jacket, not into the collar stand. It's not, it's gonna, not gonna get to stick straight up like the collar is. And then you wouldn't really have to worry about it. But because it's going down into the body of the jacket, it's gotta bend back on itself and it needs to be able to spread out. Where's that spot that I think I nicked one thread right there? Oh, I need to do my back stitch too. <laughs> Feel like reinforcing the whole thing but I know that's probably overkill. <laughs> Alright let's do the back stitch down here. Alright I'm going to clip this corner just a little bit. I'm not going to be too aggressive. I can always go back and do more. <laughs> Thank you Martina. Yeah, I'm glad I remembered that. That would have been kind of sad if I hadn't, huh? All right, it already feels better just doing that little clip clipperoo. I might experiment with um, low heat or a press cloth and pressing it. I think it can handle that. That shouldn't. I really actually think I could have probably ironed it the whole way. I just can't use the kind of iron that you need to set the interfacing. And so then when you're all done, you're going to top stitch through the thicknesses here and they do stitch in the ditch. I'd probably do it right next to the seam if I could. But you know, it is a little bit, oh, this is, uh, I already did this stitch right here. Oh, that's interesting. I was picturing this seam somewhere else and then it wouldn't affect it. But that is a part of this seam. Oh, that's funny. Well, darn. I mean, I can always take out this top stitch and then do it. But th that kind of stitching makes me a little nervous because it's going to, you're going to have to be so precise here, you know, for on the other side. Maybe what I would do, what would I do? What could you do that's kind of clever? You know, one of the clever things you could do is actually attach the seam allowances right here. Right now. You know, why not? Yeah, exactly, Barbara, I think so. Yeah, so you could, if I didn't have this top stitch, just picture it. So it is attached here at the seam, right? This is one, right? But up here, what if you got as close as you could, put your seam allowances together of this flap, made sure you didn't get any torquing, right? And you could just top stitch it together all the way down. I think that would make this flap have a crisper fold and make it behave and it would be sandwiched together 
So I might try that next, when we're back on uh, Wednesday. And the same on this side, you know? And I think what, how I would do it is I would make sure that, you know, I'm folding it along this edge very evenly. And I would also make sure that, you know, I'm not, I'm not like getting this side, this layer pulled this way and this side pulled that way so it doesn't have those torque lines. And then you could top stitch these or t edge stitch these two together, the raw edges. You know what I mean? Look at that. Well, let's just do it right now. <laughs> I mean, why not? Let's try it. <laughs> I'm going to start from the bottom here. And so this is, this is the jacket. This is the facing. And then here's the flap. And I'm folding that flap in half here. I'm lining up those edges. And um, I'm going to stitch pretty close to that seam. always take it out right let's look how different it looks if we do this Go as high as we can. Look at that. Now I have a, a distinct flap. That looks so much better. Yeah, look at that. It already looks so much better. Yeah, that is a, that's a nice little trick. You can't do it going all the way up. But this is going to help a lot because now um, when I go to top stitch the seam later on, it'll feel more like I'm going to land on the inside on the seam. They like, they suggest doing it, stitch in the ditch. <laughs> all these straight lines things. Yeah, so I'll probably remove the top stitch on the other one and do that as well. Let's see. Cause see right now, look at this one. This one just has this like loose, flappy flap, you know? But if it were attached, it would be like this. It'd be firmer. Yeah, it's not flapping around now. Exactly. I think I set up my whole screen. You're just wearing it, I can feel the difference of this one that I sewed. Cool. It's pretty long for me. This size would fit me though, you know, like with especially taking out that, like it. Sorry, the microphone. Face the light. You know, it feels really long, but look at my hands, like they're not like, they're not extended. I'd have to go like this to get, see? Here's the bottom of the pocket. So yeah, it's long, but it doesn't feel like the hem is two inches, so it would be folded up about here. Yeah. Can you guys see? Sorry that this camera's not very light. I 
And I would do the draw cord maybe, I don't know. But you know what? I already have a jacket that looks like this with the Kelly Anorak, don't I? <laughs> yeah, cool. All right, well, that was fun. It was nice to have such a positive redemption sewing day. I really want to get the lining in there, but we'll wait. So, oh, we still have the sleeves too. Dang, maybe I should keep going. <laughs> yeah, that really needs to be kind of calmed down, that little, that flap area. Cool, all right, well, um, so next it'll be, we're really getting down there though. We attach the sleeves, um, the lining, we know how to do those. And then we do the hems. That's everything, right? And then we have to do all the fussy finishing, right? Snaps, top stitching. If you're using the draw cord, put the draw cord in. Um, and that stuff obviously takes a bit. So, <laughs> well, it wasn't that challenging, Angela. It wasn't too bad, honestly. Like I think look, once you know how it goes together, it's so much easier, right? It's like, it's like the first time you make cookies, you have to read the directions. But if you're making them for, um, you know, like 10 batches of them on the third batch, you're like, oh, I got this. And it's the same thing, right? You just don't get to practice as much as you probably want to. Do we top stitch around the neck yet? Clip, 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 clip. It just says press. Yeah, so. I really want to see the lining in there, but yeah. Cool, all right, well, thanks you guys. <laughs> thanks for sticking around. <laughs> and, um, oh, sorry, you can't even see it. Whoops, uh, there we go. When I say me and, uh, it's me and machine, not me and computer. Yeah, so there we go. Looking good. Nice, yeah. I hope he likes it. It seems so long. Cool, all right, you guys. Well, have a great weekend. So next Wednesday, I'll be back to finish this. And then on Thursday, we'll be cutting out the North Star Pullover by Love Notions. Um, and we'll be sewing it on Saturday. And then that'll conclude our menswear month. Doesn't mean we won't sell more menswear during the year. But that was the uh, annual menswear month. Did a lot this month, so cool. All right, and then I'll have the August calendar soon too. So I'm glad to hear you guys' um, feelings that doing the weekly installments of the Blazer Sew Along will be great. So that last week in August, we won't be sewing. We'll just be cutting and fitting, and, you know, then you'll have a whole week to noodle on that and cut it out for our first sewing step. Maybe we'll make the first sewing steps uh, smaller ones just so that you can, we can get our sewing legs under us. But we have, like, a month or more to think about that. So it's almost a month to the day of my anniversary. So I love how I'm making a big deal about my sewing YouTube anniversary. My wedding anniversary is next month as well. And it's my brother's birthday on my YouTube anniversary. <laughs> They're important to me too. <laughs> All right, you guys, well, have a great weekend and um, I'll see you guys Wednesday. All right, thanks so much for the donations, Ray and Nicole, right? It was Nicole, yeah. So I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Where's my little thingy? There it is. Cool. Until then, bye.